Good evening and welcome. Will everyone please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, led by our seniors, Anna Hosry and Tessa McCormick. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. It's an indeed pleasure to welcome you to the annual induction ceremony of the Passaic Valley Honor Society. As a school that prides itself on rich tradition and strong roots, this ceremony is special in that it's the oldest honor society at our school, predating the National Honor Society by more than 20 years. It's also a special honor because it recognizes scholastic achievement, co-curricular activities, and services rendered to our school. It has long been established that there's a direct correlation between extracurricular involvement and academic achievement. We at Passaic Valley not only believe this to be true, but believe participating in extracurriculars like sports, clubs, plays, and other school and community activities help to build a well-rounded, productive citizen. This is a school rich in tradition, and the tradition of this honor society is all about being an active member of what we refer to as the Passaic Valley community. This evening, our selected reading this evening is an original essay, both written and presented by senior Bushra Chowdhury. Good evening. My name is Bushra Chowdhury, and I would first and foremost like to congratulate the inductees for getting where they are today. I happen to be sitting on this very stage two years ago as a sophomore. I know that it's not easy to get here. When I first got the email from Dr. Yopes on May 10th asking for a senior inductee to give a speech at today's induction, I immediately gave in to my do-it-all tendencies and signed up for the job. This should be easy, I said to myself, thinking I could get away with reading the transcript of an inspirational TED Talk I found off of YouTube. But unfortunately, after hours of reading, I realized most TED Talks possess themes which don't necessarily convey the message I would want you all to leave today's ceremony with. After procrastinating and hating myself for signing up for something I should have known I wasn't cut out for, I found myself sitting at my laptop at 2 a.m. this morning, trying to figure out what to say today. Fortunately, I found some inspiration from an author I quoted in my Common App personal statement, Malcolm Gladwell. His book, Outliers, The Story of Success, profiles 75 exceptional individuals, the best of their field. He studied such outliers and found that being smart or talented did not necessarily translate to success. In fact, he found at least two shared characteristics that set the best apart from the bunch. One is that they amassed the equivalent of 10,000 hours of practice before reaching the pinnacle of their careers. In other words, Freddie Mercury didn't just stroll onto the stage and dominate it. And Barack Obama did more than quickly skim his notes before tests to get into Columbia. These individuals, like many other hotshots out there, spent a plethora of their time trying to achieve greatness, exemplifying that sometimes it's better to be the exception than to be the standard. The other common factor is that the great ones were all provided with and took advantage of unique opportunities in their lives. Mark Zuckerberg created a special website in an attempt to get revenge on his ex-girlfriend, and this website later evolved into what we know as Facebook. And even more recently, an anonymous source posted a photo on Instagram of an egg, succeeding in his goal to beat Kylie Jenner's record for most liked photo on Instagram. While Mr. Zuckerberg and the Eggman's journeys to notoriety can be held on different pla platforms, what they both have in common is that they paid close attention to their audience, which was the world, and seized the opportunity. Now, if I were with you all in the audience listening to what I've been saying, I would immediately think to myself, well, I'm not Freddie Mercury, or Barack Obama, or Mark Zuckerberg. And if any of you were thinking that, then you were absolutely right. None of you are any of these figures, nor will you ever be. But you have to remember that it's completely OK, because you are all a diversified group of individuals with different interests, passions, and motivations, capable of making a mark if you choose to take advantage of the opportunities provided, which many of you already have. 
The fact that you are on the stage today is proof that you have worked diligently and made the opportunities afforded to you by your parents, your school, and your community. While school is not exactly like the real world, in essence, they share parallels in the fact that you were given so many chances to do incredible things, but you may face some adversary circumstances. Hardship is inevitable, but we can't always use it as an excuse to not live up to our potential and be the best versions of ourselves. We must look at it as a reason to work twice as hard, if anything. And when you get to where you wanted, congratulations, but you're not done just yet. Each day we are given 24 hours to make choices, take chances, and even make mistakes. But as they say in Disney Meet the Robinsons, keep moving forward. While you may think now or in the near future you've reached the pinnacle of success, remember you're not truly finished with your purpose until the curtain of life begins to draw close on you. Reflecting on his life as he laid on his deathbed, Steve Jobs stated, life has no limit. Go where you want to go. Reach the height you want to reach. It is all in your heart and in your hands. As young people, you all may be wondering what direction to head in as you come to terms with the oblivion that is this world. As a senior, I've personally struggled with this. But one day, as I was scrolling through my Visco feed on my phone, I came across a rather life-changing quote from F. Scott Fitzgerald, which stated the following. For what it's worth, it's never too late, or in my case, too early to be whoever you want to be. There's no time limit. Stop whenever you want. You can change or stay the same. There are no rules to this thing. We can make the best or the worst of it. I hope you choose to make the best of it. And I hope you see things that startle you. I hope you feel things you never felt before. I hope you meet people with a different point of view. I hope you live a life you're proud of. And if you find that you're not, I hope you have the courage to start all over again. You've all made it here because you simply took advantage of what this community has to offer to you. Continuing to follow this principle and allowing your drive to succeed will guide you through the inexhaustible variety of life. And when the time comes, I hope you are left with a sense of fulfillment. Thank you. Thank you, Busher. Our next speaker is a true professional, our supervisor of STEM, Mr. Michael Carlucci. Hello, everyone. Uh, congratulations to all the inductees. Um, I wish you were sitting in front of me because this little speech is really kind of intended to you guys. I want to thank Dr. Yopes for asking me to speak tonight. <laughs> I promise you I kept it under 30 minutes, so don't worry. That's supposed to be a joke, guys. Come on. There you go. Okay. Trust me, I'm short and sweet. Okay. <clears throat> uh, just real quick, I want to ask you guys a question that has been asked to a lot of kids, and not actually a lot of adults. What do you want to be when you grow up? And up till this moment in my life, whenever people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always, asked, I always said one thing. And I would like, don't call it out. I'd just like you to think in your head. See if you can guess what I, what I would always say. Okay, so when people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always say, happy. And people would say, okay, that's fine, but what do you want to be? And I would say, happy. And they would say, okay, but what do you want to be? That doesn't make any sense. And I would say, whatever I'm doing in life, I just want to be happy at it, okay? And most of the time, I got kind of a strange look from people. <clears throat> but a, a while ago, I read a book called The Five Secrets You Must Discover Before You Die. Um, I forget the guy's name. Uh, I forget what it is. If any of you read it, it's a great book. Uh, but what he did was he actually did an interesting survey. He did a survey of over 200 people worldwide. He did tribal leaders, religious leaders, garbage men, hair cutters, teachers. He did all, the whole slew. And all these people, they were all, all over 60 years old, 60 to over 100 years old, and they all supposedly led happy lives. And they, he, what he did was, after interviewing these people, obviously it took a long time, he found five particular traits that they all had in common. So I'd like to share this with you guys tonight. Number one was be true to yourself. Be true to yourself. I, I taught for 28 years, now I'm an administrator, and my own, I have three children I'm blessed with. I've told them, please, don't pick a career that you think is gonna make you a lot of money. Pick something that you, you're gonna use your unique gifts at and, and actually use them. Because if you can get up every day and go to work and be happy with what you're doing, that's the home run. Regardless of how much money you make, who cares? Money's not gonna make you happy. Just pick what you believe. And, and in, in this book, if you choose to read it, he has a lot of real life stories. One is uh, an engineer, a, a, a professor at a big college, for, was an engineer professor for many years. And he said he couldn't tell you how many times 
kids went into engineering because their parents or somebody told them that they should be doing that or the parents were engineers and almost every one of them failed out or just dropped out or whatever because it wasn't in their heart. Follow your heart. Number two is to take more chances, take more risks, leave no regrets. One of the biggest things on people's deathbeds is that they have regret things. I wish I had done this, I wish I had done that. Now please, don't go jumping off a bridge or something crazy or jump, you know, whatever, something stupid. That's, that's just dumb, okay? But taking chances. My favorite story from this chapter was when it was a guy who was happily married for over 60 years. And <clears throat> he said he was a freshman in college when he met his future wife, and his wife was, and he was a real nerd, he said, and his wife was this beautiful, like, upper, upper classman, and they were at a dance, years ago they used to have dances, and he asked her to dance. He got up the nerve to ask her to dance, and she said no originally, but he persisted at it, and eventually they, they started dating, and they danced, and they got married, and were married over 60 years, and he said he could never imagine what his life would be like if he had never had the courage to take that chance and ask her. So take more chances in life, don't be afraid. The third one is become love, which is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, choose love over hate. Jesus, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, how many people we could say change the world by choosing love over hate? The fourth one is live the moment. Live in the moment. You know, the past is called the past for that reason. It's past, there's nothing you can do to change it. There's very little that you can do by worrying about the future that's gonna change the future. Live in the moment. And the, the, th the fifth one is Always give more than you take. <clears throat> I've been happily married for two years. I don't want to talk about the other 23 years, but <laughs> that was good, you guys got that one. <laughs> I've been happily married for 25 years, and, and I, honestly, I always tell people the secret is, my wife and myself, always think of the other person first. If each of you thinks of the other person first, you're gonna make it work. I'm not saying we never fight, we don't argue, we don't disagree, but always think of the other person first. And like St. Francis said, you know, in giving we receive. Some of you guys that are old farts like me remember Wayne Gretzky, he was called the great one. And one of my favorite quotes my children know is that you miss 100% of the shots that you never take. <clears throat> and one of my favorite things is to say that courage, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is acting in the face of fear. And I just wanna end with a real quick story about my youngest daughter who actually I told her tonight, she said, Dad, what are you gonna say tonight? And I told her, she said, why are you always gonna tell that story? I said, because it's a great story. So my, my youngest daughter was, was a good athlete, played soccer, and she was probably sixth or seventh grade, and she was in a, a big soccer tournament and right in West Orange High School, and they went into to, to penalty kicks, and it was a shootout. And she wasn't really good at, at penalty kicks, and she said she was going to pee in her pants. She was so nervous and everything, but she got picked because she was one of the better players. And she stepped up and took the kick and completely flubbed it. I mean, almost missed the ball completely. You know, it wasn't even close to being, being a goal. Uh, luckily, her, her teammates stepped up and they, they, they wound up winning the tournament, which was good. So afterwards, I went up to her and I gave her a big hug and a big kiss and I said, sweetheart, I'm so proud of you. And she had tears in her eyes, you know, she felt like a failure. She said, Dad, I missed a shot. I said, sweetheart, I don't care that you missed a shot. I said, I'm so proud of you that you had the courage to take the shot. I said, it's so easy to sit on the sidelines and just sit there and say, I could do better. Well, I could have done that. If I, made, if I took that shot, I could have made it. I said, you had the courage to take it. Always take your shot. So my two things that I hope and pray for you guys tonight is number one, whatever you choose in life that you find happiness in whatever you're doing, and number two, that when the time comes for your shot, when your shot comes, that you have the courage to take that shot. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Our musical interlude allows us the opportunity to showcase some of the t real talent that we have here at, at Sig Valley. Uh, tonight we feature Gabriella Valenino, accompanied by Michael Burgos, who will sing Come Out and Play. <laughs> Wake up and smell the coffee Is your cup half full or empty? When we talk, you say it softly But I love it when you're awfully quiet mm. Quiet You see a piece of paper could be a little greater Show me what you can make her You'll never know when 
until you try it mm. You don't have to keep it quiet And I know it makes you nervous But I promise you it's worth it To show me Everything you kept inside Don't hide Don't hide Too shy to say But I hope you stay Don't hide away Come out Look up out of your window See snow, won't let it in though Leave home and feel the wind blow Cause it's colder here inside in silence And you don't have to keep it quiet And I know it makes you but I promise you it's worth it To show them everything you kept inside Don't hide Don't hide Too shy to say but I Stay, don't hide away Come out and play <laughs> Nice job guys, very nice Now I'd like to invite up to the podium Alyssa Manella and Elise Pluas and Rachel Lewis to introduce our inductees. Will the inductees of the class of 2019 please rise? Zane Ashraf, Catherine Bennett, Sarah Cavello, Maylin Dassinger, Thomas Ehrenberg, Effie Caleros, Briance Lennon, Alexander Perez, Gregory Sabak, and Gabriella Volanino. Will the inductees of the class of 2020 please rise? Zachary Abdel Salam, Justin Abreu, Christy Ack, Samiha Allen, Christina Angelo, Edward Bennett, Dylan Calderon, Angelo Coro, Kevin Coro, Zachariah Dehan, John Delaquilla, Makadonka Dimkova, Shayna Donnelly, Natalie Fuqueni, Natalie Garofalo, Bobby Glennon, Violet Go. Isabella, Isabella Garenti, Jack Jones, Gabriel Jerkic, Mohamed Kiam, 
Alyssa Latour, Alberto Leon, Kayla Leonard, Olivia Manfredo, Gina Manzi, Alex Martin, Ashley Martin, Jana Liz Martinez, Melissa Murtai, Gianna Noriega, James Pichelli, Kushabu Patel, Julia Pelicani. Olivia Picarello, Victoria Pizzi, Ashley Povolo, Victoria Povolo, Michaela Ragusio, Jadalyn Rodriguez, Denali Santiago, Jerry Sevillano, Olivia Sweezy, Devija Thacker, Juliana Tordo, and Matt Watkins. Will the inductees of the class of 2021 please rise? Brianna DeLucia. Devin De Pasquale, Daniel Dransfield, Liz Dubov, Aaliyah Figueroa, Brianna Getzoff, Taylor Hill, Cameron Hyde, Nicholas Iacovo, Nicolette Giuliano, Daniel Kanya, Rebecca Casper. Batul Coach, Madison Leach, Victoria Marquez, Layla Matari, Sarah Mitchell, Teresa Payne, Lauren Russo, Colby Salido, and Lainey Thompson. Dr. Yopes, as advisor to the Passaic Valley Honor Society, will you please lead them in the pledge? Please be seated. I'd now like to recognize the senior members of the, National, of the Passaic Valley Honor Society. As I call your name, please come up. Arbin Adili. Lindsay Amadola. Julia Arshid. Zane Ashraf, <laughs> Sophia Ayub, <laughs> Catherine Bennett, <laughs> Mar
Michael Burgos. <laughs> Kathleen Cathcart. Bushra Chowdhury. Chandon Cole. Kayla Kostick. Sarah Covello. Andrea Cruz. Isabel Custodio Ortiz. Malin Dassinger. Bianca Delano. Tindin Doe. Thomas Ehrenberg. Catherine Ferguson. Christina Folin. Danielle Gaeta. Jessica Dick Gaeta. Mark Garcia. Nell Grabowski. Melissa Harder. Anna Hosry. Emily Hyde. Raisa Islam. Anaya Khan. Afima Coleros. Lauren Crankel. Beyonce Lennon Llanos. Ra Rachel Lewis. Mega Mahmood. Julia Marchesani. Jocelyn Martinez. Lazara Mazza Hillway. Tessa McCormick. Alisa Manella. Isabella Nicosia. Sari Oli Sarah Olivia. Alexander Papasavas. Alexander Perez. Derek Pizzo. Annalise Plujas. Sabrina Rivera. Greg Sabak. Stefan Shrimp. Samantha Torres. Gianna Trapanese. Olivia Logliario. And Gabriella Volanino. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our senior inductees that have been here. In closing, I'd like to congratulate all of our inductees and their parents and guardians. I know the support that they receive at home played a major role for their success and why they're here this evening. I'd like to thank the Passaic Valley Honor Society advisor, Dr. Yopes, for all the work she has done to make this evening possible. I also like to thank Dr. Yopes for all the work she does at Passaic Valley for our students. I'd also like to thank Mr. Carlucci for joining us this evening. And now, will our inductees please rise? Ladies and gentlemen, a last applause for our inductees of the Passaic Valley Island Society. I'd now like to invite everyone to please join us in the cafeteria. And I ask our inductees to possess off the stage, please. Thank you for coming. Congratulations again.